You are listening to Audio Paper Series with Yasser, and today's guest is Dr. Saya Vedra from Quadram Institute, Norwich, UK, to discuss one of her publications. The Sulfovibrio deastrophicus, a sulfate-reducing bacterium from the human gut capable of nitrogen fixation. It is published in Environmental Microbiology Journal. Welcome, Liz. Thank you, Yasir, for the invitation. I'm very pleased to be here. Thank you for coming. Why did you study the Sulfovibrio? We are really interested in the Sulfovibrio because the sulfate-reducing bacteria produce hydrogen sulfide. And hydrogen sulfide is a highly toxic gas when it's in high concentrations. Um, so these bacteria are present in most of the human population, but when they reach higher number, mm -hmm. um, it has been linked to colonic diseases such as ulcerative colitis or colorectal cancer. So that's why we wanted to understand the ecology of these bacteria and what triggers them to become a bad member of the microbiota. Okay, and how the nitrogen fixation comes in? Why nitrogen fixation is important in the gut microbiome environment? Yeah, so all animals require access to a source of fixed nitrogen. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the nitrogen that we have available in our gut comes from the food. Um, but by the time it reaches the large intestine, most of the nitrogen becomes um, a limiting resource. Uh, so the human host can regulate the nitrogen available in the microbiome through the um, diet and intestinal secretions. Um, so bacteria that can fix nitrogen could potentially have an advantage um, against oh. other bacteria if they can occupy spaces in the gut that other bacteria cannot occupy. What experiments you did in this study? So we had a collaboration with the University of Jiangnan in China. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were doing isolation efforts from um, for for isolating sulfur reducing bacteria from stool samples from collections from UK and China. Mm -hmm. And while analyzing the genomes, we found that there was a new species that was previously not described, and this new species could fix nitrogen based on the genome. So the first thing we wanted to do to do was to um, do physiological tests to examine if the nitrogenase activity was possible. And once we proved this, we examined other human samples. So we did metagenomic sequencing of 45 more human donors, um, as well as analyze the comprehensive collections of genomes um, from more than 200,000 individuals. And we found there that it was actually um, in more than 20 humans so uh, so far. Um, and finally, um, based on public transcriptome, so this is like the activity of the genes, um, we found that at least in six more individuals, there was evidence for expression of these genes for the nitrogenase belonging to this species. Okay, okay. So you did quite extensive study. So that was not a small study. It was quite extensive. Yeah, it was a combination of different um, omic approaches, so transcriptomics, metagenomics, and as well as um, physiological analysis, which is now important to do in this uh, modern age. We, we shouldn't stay just in the omic approaches. I think that's very important. True, very true. <laughs> so uh, would you uh, brief us with the main findings of your study? What was the highlight of their study? Sure. So usually when we think about nitrogen fixation, most scientists think of the beneficial association between uh, legumes and bacteria that can fix nitrogen for them. This is the most classical example of nitrogen fixation. Mm -hmm. So in this study, we show that this can uh, happen, happen in, um, or that you don't need to go so far. Nitrogen fixation can also occur in your gut. We also have some indication that the process of nitrogen fixation um, actually occurs, so it's not just um, encoded in the genome. Mm -hmm. um, so potentially this process is relevant also for um, for the bacteria. Oh. Um, so this, this study challenge or long-standing view that animals can only get fixed nitrogen from proteins in the diet mainly. How can we use these findings about novel species for future studies? 
That's an excellent question. Um, we're not sure yet. I think um, the next question is first to investigate what is the relevance of nitrogen fixation in the gut. So we want to understand if this fixed nitrogen can be shared with the rest of the microbiota or the host. Ah, okay. Okay. That's and, very, very good, like starting point. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, and then such information could be later be exploited to provide alternative routes for acquiring fixed nitrogen or controlling its availability to the rest of the gut community. Mm -hmm. And this would make a significant contribution to overcoming the lack of proteins in vegetarian diets, for example, or addressing the greater uh, um, issue of malnutrition where lack of protein is a major global concern. Lovely. Thank you very much, Liz. It was nice talking to you. Thank you.